everyone, it's me, Molly. Molly of the Nolly. Let's go. She's Molly of the Nolly. <laughs> Come along oh. with Molly. Molly. Who fills the fire we Come along with Molly. Molly. From Tundra to the sea. She's Molly of the Nolly. She's Molly of the Nolly. When you get everyone's attention, please, Dr. Mumford. <clears throat> um, attention, everyone. We want to make sure you're all here. The champion yodeler? Hi, Dad. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> The zookeeper. The diabites. The scientist. But of course. The archaeologist. <coughs> a present and accounted for. And last, but certainly not least, the countess. Here, darling. And Marvin. And Marvin. Thank you, Dr. Mumford. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in the dining car. As you know, just after the train left Denali, the countess's priceless and delicious Necklace was stolen. Have you found out who did it, detective? Patience, please, Countess. Let me explain what I figured out. Now, Dr. Mumford, remind everyone what happened right before the jewels were snatched. Suki got out and we chased her into the next car. Correct, but she wasn't out for long, so whoever took the necklace was ready for it. Maybe even planned it. You mean Suki's escape and the theft of the necklace were connected? Precisely, Countess. I found a very particular grease stain on both the door to the cargo car where Suki was riding and on the rack above the seat where you were keeping your necklace. Interesting, Detective. Remember the footprints in the dirt? You said they might be a clue. They were fresh footprints, which was weird because we thought we were the first people off the train. We left as soon as Catherine announced it was safe to get off the train and go explore. Which tells us that the person who made the footprints didn't need to wait for Catherine's announcement because they work on the train and already knew it was safe to get off. <gasps> you mean someone who works on the train stole my necklace? Yes, someone who knew Suki was back there in her crate and knew how to let her out so she could distract everyone. Someone who spent time in the dome car and in the cargo car where the grace was found. Someone named Marvin! Huh? Oh, Marvin is the thief? Well, well, Detective Mabray, you are exceedingly clever. But you forget, I was not in the dome car when the necklace was taken. I left to talk to the engineer. Quite true. So, how could Marvin have taken my necklace if he wasn't there? Because Marvin had an accomplice! <gasps> Someone helped Marvin steal my necklace? Yes, Countess, which brings me to the Puffin in the woods. It does? I don't see how they're related. Scientist Hans, why did you seem so surprised when we saw you in the forest? Well, I don't know who took the necklace, but I do know that Puffins do not live in this habitat. And that is because Puffins mostly live on the ocean and only visit nearby land to breathe. But we're nowhere near the ocean here. Indeed. I couldn't understand why I was hearing a puffin in the wrong environment. The answer, sir, is that you weren't hearing a puffin. None of us were. The sound we heard didn't come from the bird. It came from a bird call. It sounded very authentic. Thank you. The bird call could have only come from a very special collection, one like I have. My prize puffin bird call. I don't understand. When Marvin let Suki loose to cause a distraction, his accomplice took the necklace. <gasps> but who is the accomplice who took my necklace? Only one person could have loaned Marvin the Puffin Call. The person who was watching it for me, Sir Walter. Oh, me? Yes, Sir Walter. You and Marvin were working together. So you had to be the one who took the jewels when we were distracted by Suki's escape. And you hid them with my bird call collection in that bag. 
And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for the great Detective Mabray and Dr. Mumford. Hmm. I'm right? It's true? <laughs> it's true, Molly. <laughs> nice work, Detective Mabray. Thank you. I've always wanted to see this. Elementary, my dear Trini. Elementary. Great work, Trini! <clears throat> now I'm giving up yodeling and going back to being a librarian. Congratulations, Molly. When we booked the tickets, I asked to help with the crime. I wanted to make the train ride extra fun for you. I know how much you love mysteries. You are an excellent detective, Molly. We were lucky to have you on board the mystery train. And it looks like the rain is back. Everyone, thank you for participating in our fun. Now, who wants to get a look at the priceless stolen necklace? Sir Walter? Follow me, everyone. This way to the bag where I packed the necklace alongside Molly's bird calls. Ta-da! Isn't it beautiful? The jewels on the necklace are entirely chocolate. Made right here in Alaska. One chocolate jewel for everyone. Please, come and help yourselves. You deserve a reward. Wait a second. Walter, what's the matter? One of the bird calls is missing. There were six, and now there's five. It's gone? For real? I'm sorry, Molly. This isn't part of the game. I promise. It's your puffin call. Layla? Hmm. I didn't take it. Marvin, is there another mystery to solve? Just the one. It seems as though Molly's puffin bird call has actually gone missing. But I gave it back to you. You did, and I was extremely careful to place it back in the bag. It's gone? For real? I, I don't know what to say, Molly. It has to be on this train somewhere. Well, it looks like you might have to keep your detective hat on a little longer. Trini, you know what this means? Now we have a real mystery to solve. A storm is coming. Perfect mystery solving weather. Not great state fair weather, though. It's okay. It looks like the rain is pretty light. I've brought some tea and pretzels. Everyone, please help yourselves. Uh, Detective Mabray? Thank you, Marvin. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a short announcement. Another mystery? Mind if I film you? Go right ahead, Tony. As you all may have heard, a very special item has gone missing. One of my prized bird calls. I am so sorry, Molly. Bummer, Molly. Thank you. But it is my belief that someone here knows where it is. And it is my goal, our goal, our goal to find it before we reach Anchorage. While you enjoy your snacks, Trini and I will be asking you each a few questions. Who oh, should we ask first, Molly? Well, if you're looking for a bird call, why not start with the bird watcher? Hans. Oh, Molly. I know what it is like to lose a bird call. Do you have any idea where it may have gone? Oh, no idea in the slightest, but I'll keep an eye out, as that's a promise from one bird watcher to another. <sighs> Masi cho, Hans. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Tony. I didn't see you there. No problem, Molly. I was just getting a close-up of your investigation on film, since you said you didn't mind. It's good stuff. Hmm. A real mystery would be good for your documentary. Have you seen my bird call? Sorry, Molly. I haven't noticed anything. What about Luke? Luke, yes, the musician. He said my bird call was like a musical instrument. Where did he go? <gasps> Do you think he's disappeared? Nah, I saw him setting up his instruments in the lounge car. He's gonna play some music for us before we reach Anchorage. Let's go, Trini. Hi, Luke. <gasps> I, I, 
I'm Molly. Trini, you scared me. You seem jumpy, Luke. Oh, uh, I, I, I always get nervous before I play in front of a group. You have a lot of instruments for just one person. I like to play all different things. I was just tuning them. You gotta make sure I sound good. Uh-huh. Um, any chance you, uh, borrowed my bird call for your performance? I wouldn't do that without asking you. Plus, like you said, I've got a lot of instruments already. You sure do. Can we hear you play something? Sure thing, Trini. I usually start with my harmonica. It's right here in... Hey, now. What's the matter? My harmonica. It's... It's gone! Oh, no! Something else has gone missing, too! The Molly of Denali podcast was created by WGBH and Gen Z Media in partnership with PBS Kids and PRX. If you like what you hear, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And for more adventures with Molly Molly of Denali, check out the PBS Kids video app. She's Molly of Denali. She's Molly.